y'all. It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got Vince McMahon opponent leaked WWE and then the brand split AEW delete uh Putin line and other wrestling news. I know we talked about uh Vince supposedly having some type of wrestling match this year. Um uh, last week on on a, on another video. And a lot of you guys was like, oh, it's not gonna happen. There's no way that happens. I don't know, man. Maybe there is some truth. Maybe Vince McMahon is going to have a match at this year's WrestleMania. I don't want to see that. I'm just be honest with you. I think him being in the ring is past him. You know, he wasn't just the best wrestler, but, you know, he, he was able to, you know, work, you know, work different spots and stuff like that. And, you know, it was, you know, cool to see him back in the day getting in the ring with Austin and and uh, some of some of the other talent or whatnot, you know, just to enhance the story. But I don't think fans really want to see that anymore. So I don't know what's about to happen. This should be a good one, man. WrestleMania is always, you know, dropping some pretty dope videos related to wrestling news and rumors. So this should be a good one, man. But I appreciate all the love and support. We're almost at 70K. Thank you guys so much for that. Let's get right into this one. Now, guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Now, the 2022 Elimination Chamber is in the rearview mirror as the road to WrestleMania <coughs> continues with newly crowned mm -hmm. WWE Champion Brock Lesnar appearing last night to confront Universal Champion Roman Reigns. The fans can expect a lot of fireworks when this happens, but what else? Well, join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including... Mr. McMahon's WrestleMania opponent revealed? Is WWE scrapping the brand split? Mm. AEW deletes a controversial Vladimir Putin line? And much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. No, definitely go subscribe now, as always, we won't recap channel. the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good is number one, a good Rousey promo. I didn't, I didn't Can Ronda Rousey the, cut uh, a good... Uh, her promo, I may have to check it out. I didn't uh, even know she had a promo segment. Promo. Well, that's a question fans have debated ever since the baddest woman on the planet entered the WWE. While Rousey's first WWE run featured some awkward promos, Ronda improved when she turned heel, suggesting it might be a case of honing her mic skills. While Rousey is still a babyface, last night's promo showed Rousey is still learning. It was nice that the crowd didn't sh** on her, which always helps. Number two, Pat McAfee is life. <laughs> Pat McAfee's color commentary continues to add so much more to every episode of SmackDown, and it's no stretch to say that he's so good that we'll tune in every Friday night just to see what craziness McAfee has in store. McAfee is one of those rare color commentators whose enthusiasm never crosses the line mm -hmm. into obnoxiousness, and he makes every match seem so special. While Raw could benefit from McAfee's presence, we're glad to see him on SmackDown as we're not sure how long Pat could last on Mondays before the show sucked the life out of him. I ain't gonna lie to you, Pat McAfee, him being in co on commentary is one of the one of the greater decisions WWE has made, man. The dude, it, it, he's hilarious, bro. He is hilarious. I, I love his commentary and, and just who he likes, who he doesn't like. It's, it's just, I like it, man. I like it. He knows how to be entertaining on the microphone when calling the match. It's it's great, man. Pat McAfee is an actual gym, and they need to keep him on SmackDown. Don't bring him Monday Night Raw. Just keep him on SmackDown. SmackDown could definitely use his color commentary. Speaking of McAfee, rumor has it he may be wrestling at this year's showcase of the Immortals. Be sure to check into the news to see who he's facing. Number three, Heyman cuts to commercial. A Paul Heyman has done heard, a lot during his wrestling. I heard about this. I just didn't see it. In career, managing, running ECW, and providing color commentary, so it's no surprise Roman Reigns' tribal council decided to try something new last night. In this case, cutting to a commercial. The segment was kind of strange, but it was also kind of cool. A reminder that you never know what the former Paulie Dangerously is gonna do. Number four, a star in the making. It was good to see Xia Lee on SmackDown as she's one of the most promising new stars in the WWE's women's division and let's just pray she doesn't get the Tony Storm treatment. Her win over Natalia was exactly what you wanted from her at this point in her career, a chance for her to look good against an accomplished veteran. Now it's just up to the WWE to give her a sustained push. We will see. That's going to be easier said than done, however, given the WWE's obsession with pushing an elite few in the women's division, it may not be that hard. We will Number 5. See. Best Brock Roman Segment Ever a major pro This segment was good. The segment was fantastic. Brock was fantastic. Yeah, I said it. Brock was fantastic. Roman 
knocked it out the park. This was great. This was a segment I enjoyed, one of their better ones, and it definitely, for me, just a little bit, created some more excitement for that match at this year's WrestleMania. Props to the WWE for presenting perhaps the best segment ever between Brock and Reigns. These two have clashed so often in the ring and in talk segments that it's on. hard to find anything new to explore. Nonetheless, both men did as Brock channeled his best Paul Heyman talking trash while predicting a win over Roman at WrestleMania 38, as well as an ass beating for both Reigns and Heyman. Heyman did his usual trash talking, but the highlight of the night was Roman Reigns' power mad proclamation mm -hmm. that SmackDown is his place, with the Universal Champion pointing out how everything is his, ranging from the cameraman, the announced crew, the fans, and even the WrestleMania sign. Reigns took what could have been a ridiculously over the top promo and made it his own. That the superb was segment was capped off by the obligatory post contract signing brawl mm -hmm. as Brock Lesnar level security, which Roman noted as his security. And definitely a gold star for one of the security guards who had the wherewithal to sweep a wayward microphone out of the way when Brock delivered a F5 to a hapless guard, possibly <laughs> saving him from a trip to the chiropractor's office. <laughs> that was a good what about the bad is number one, endless rematches. Mm. Does the blue brand have a temporal loop crisis? How else to explain the endless rematches fans must sit through? Last night's show featured the third match between Drew McIntyre and Madcap Moss, mm. as well as a New Day's third throwdown with Los Lotharios. As we've noted, these rematches might be interesting if the WWE added a storyline to them, in the case of the New Days versus the Los Lotharios, or it spread the rematches out, which it's definitely not doing with Drew and Madcap. And number two, no time for women's matches? What's up with the WWE only giving its female undercard workers one or two minutes for each match? See, this is uh, a problem that WWE does. Uh, you see it in the women's division. You saw it with the women's uh, queen tournament, king queen of the ring tournament. The matches totaled up like 20 plus minutes out of all the competitors. That entire tournament for them totaled up like maybe 22 minutes or something like that. Something ridiculous. And I don't know why WWE does this because how the hell we're supposed to invest in the women if they're only having five minute matches when we know they can go. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my issue. And it's like you can't sit up there and say you're all for the women's revolution when you're only giving your women two minutes to show what they can do. That's just me personally. They need to work on that. Less rematches. Focus more on, you know, fresh matchups if possible longer matches that make sense and uh doing better for the women's division on smackdown and probably on raw i'm pretty sure it's more or less the same on raw as well and we understand that main event is like ronda rousey and charlotte get more time than performers like Xia lee and natalia <clears throat> but giving the undercard wrestlers short shrift is demeaning and robs fans of a chance to choose which wrestlers to root for Fact. and there was nothing ugly about last night's show as smackdown provided a good follow-up show after elimination chamber and built up several big blue brand bouts for this year's show of shows while some fans might be disappointed to see Sami Zayn defend the intercontinental championship against a celebrity at mania that I'm not a big fan of. I love me some Johnny Knoxville, the Jackass crew. I grew up on that, you know. But come on, man. It's like it's cool when Bad Bunny's out there wrestling, not for a title. Yeah, I, I know they did something with the 24/7 title, but we know that's a joke of a title. We we know that that's what it is. But a prestigious Intercontinental Championship match title should not be on the line with a celebrity. It just shouldn't. It should. I, I've never been a big fan of that. You know, it, it, it should, if you're going to bring in a celebrity, it should be to have like a, a fun little match, maybe enhance a feud, but not to be going for an actual title only because it's like the people that held that belt. Like, you know, a lot of those people, their careers were made by holding that championship. And it, just has, it should have so much prestige and 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 type of type of worth in the company that it shouldn't just be given to anybody uh, or it, it shouldn't even be potentially offered up in a match to anybody not everybody deserves that opportunity that's just my opinion i'm all for them having a match at wrestlemania but it should not be for the title that's that's where it's like yeah you need to say that for somebody within the company Vince McMahon loves the mainstream media's attention on the WWE's biggest show and fans should expect other celebrities to compete there as well. Not good, not bad, just meh. What did you guys think of the blue brand last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Did now let's move on to the news. Uh, this week. Let me know.
Now, first story looks at WWE scrapping the brand split. Hmm. The top in today's news is a wild rumor that's taking on a life of its own. The rumor concerns whether the WWE plans to scrap the brand split between Raw and SmackDown, a split that dates back to 2016. Now, the reason for all this talk has to do with the WWE boasting that the Brock Lesnar vs Roman Reigns bout at WrestleMania will be a title unification match as both the WWE and Universal Championship will be on the line. Naturally, fans are wondering just how the WWE intends to deal with the aftermath as a few fans expect the match to go anything but a definitive if not controversial finish. Mm. Some fans think this move makes it impossible for the WWE to do anything but feature the wrestlers of both brands on competing on each other's shows. While this is an interesting theory, it ignores the obvious alternative that the WWE could have one world champion while maintaining the brand split and having the champion defend the world title on both brands, much like the NWA world champion travel to different territories defending the belt. Mm -hmm. There's also the possibility that the WWE could go the Becky two belts route and have the unified world champion drop one of the titles at some point in the future, leading to one title on each brand. Regardless of the outcome, the speculation has fans talking and should only increase the hype for WrestleMania 38's title unification match. What do you think is going to happen? Let us know in the comments down below. Now, here's the thing about this, and this is why I've said this before, I've said this on Twitter, that um, this unification match is really the only intrigue outside of what's going on with Brock and Roman. We've seen it so many times. They main event a few times at WrestleMania. So this is the selling point. When they announced it was a unification match, it's the entry. What's really going to happen here? Are they really going to end the brand split? Are they going to have one champion float between both shows? Is the networks going to be cool with that? Because once again, these are separate networks. These are not same networks. And they got to be cool with the champions doing that. Hence, this is why, you know, they have certain say on who they want on the shows, who they feel would be best for the shows. They want it to be competitive. They're trying to get ratings and views. So that matters as well. I don't know. If you're going to have this match, and you're going to call it a unification match. I mean, you would have, to, it would make sense to get one belt. If you're going to unify, you don't unify it. You go to two to two belt route to only drop it to somebody else then it's not it's no point you might as well call it a winner take all but not a unification because they're saying it's a winner take all unification match you're unifying the titles which means it's going to be one belt which means that one person floats between both shows which pretty much kind of ends the brand split a little bit because if you're going to do that you might as well do it all across the board one women's champion one uh tag team championship you know what i'm saying like you might as well do it across the board so i'm not really sure how this is gonna work it's gonna be interesting to see but i i do think if you're gonna unify the belts it shouldn't be someone holding both belts and then they drop one because if they drop one it comes off as one is being lesser than the other roman wins right he has both belts but he drops the WWE Championship to somebody. He still holds the Universal Championship. It gives off the vibe that the WWE Championship is way less important than the Universal Championship. And if you're unifying it, it eliminates all of that. That's all I'm saying. So comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about that, man. Like, do y'all think it's going to actually be a unification? We're going to get one belt. Or do y'all think we'll probably just have one person holding both belts and then eventually they'll drop one of them? Next up, Vince McMahon's opponent leaked. There's no, more no, incredible no. rumors concerning WWE Chairman Vince McMahon as the current talk is that not only is a 76-year-old contemplating a return to the ring, but he plans on doing so against a WWE commentator. If you've been following the news, Pat you know McAfee, that Vinnie Mac has told his writers that nothing is off the table, including an in-ring return by the WWE's resident genetic jackhammer. I know some of y'all were saying, no, there's no way it's happening, that's fake news. I'm telling you, this is Vince, man. This is his company. He wants this WrestleMania to be the biggest WrestleMania ever. Best believe he'll do what he has to do. And now Ringside News is reporting, word making the rounds is that the company is currently planning a feud between Vince McMahon and Pat McAfee for WrestleMania 38. It is further said that the feud will most likely culminate in an official match between the two at the show of shows. One clue that the match is going to happen mm. is that Mr. McMahon is scheduled to appear on the Pat McAfee show on Thursday, 3rd March. Pat tweeted the news on 25th Friday about to have the conversation of a lifetime with the legendary billionaire genius Vince McMahon next week. 
Do you guys think Vince McMahon should get back in the ring? Let us know in the comments down below. I mean, I'm definitely going to check that out, man. Uh, I'll probably drop a video on that. That should be an interesting interview. But I want to see if they're going to actually build something from that. We will see. I, I don't want to see it. I just really don't want to see him in the ring. But we will see what happens here. I don't know. I, I, I'm willing to give it somewhat of a chance. If it makes sense, I mean, it really don't make sense. And I think you can give that spot to somebody else at WrestleMania. But we'll, we'll have to see how their, their interview goes. So, next up, an update on Owen Hart tournaments. The details are finally emerging on All Elite Wrestling's partnership with the Owen Hart Foundation and the Owen Hart Foundation Men and Women's Tournaments. Speculation began when AEW announced its partnership with the Foundation with questions as to how AEW would honor the late great grappler's legacy. Fans eventually learned that a men and women's tournament will be held, but questions of when have remained elusive until mm. now. According to Wrestling Inc., AEW announced that they will return to the UBS Arena in Long Island, New York on May 11th for a live Dynamite and taping for Rampage that week. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and it was noted that the taping will see the opening round matches in the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. Okay. While there's no word on who will participate or how many matches will be held, they noted the tournament finals will take place at the 2022 AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view, which is expected for late May. Dr. Martha Hart will be live at Double or Nothing to present the winners with their trophy, which is being called the Owen Cup. Okay. And finally, AEW deletes a controversial segment. That's pretty cool. Alas, but not least, All Elite Wrestling has deleted another controversial comment from its resident rapper Max Caster. Fans attending the tapings for the 25th February edition of Rampage report that Caster was talking trash on Orange Cassidy before Caster's teammates Anthony bounced about against Freshly Squeezed. According to fans, Caster spit the following. Played with the acclaim, you gotta be stupid. This guy's as popular as Vladimir Putin. Mm. Given Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it's understandable that AEW felt it is best to remove the line. However, while AEW reportedly deleted the verse, it did keep this one in. Yo, I don't like you. Anthony is about to come fight you. Best friends, very nice, very evil, but I guess you're not friends with any black people. Now, Max Caster has some controversial comments in what? AEW, so much so that AEW president Tony Khan claims he screens Caster's raps before they air on television. What do you think of the latest rap? Uh, Let us know in the comments down. I don't know, man. Anything, I get it. it. It is a very sensitive time right now. Once again, I wish... Give him all my thoughts and prayers to the people of Ukraine, man. Uh, it's 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 a horrible situation. So anything related to that, I would definitely try to stay away from. I understand you just wanted to stay stay away from it, uh, but um, yeah, man, it's it's just it's just the time we live in right now, unfortunately. And um, I'm just wishing the best outcome possible, and hopefully. You know, this situation does end relatively soon with less, you know, less casualties, man. It's, it's war is, it's, it's all, it ends up bad for everybody ultimately, man. But uh, this video was interesting, man. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Vince McMahon, if he's going to be a part of WrestleMania in that capacity. Don't really want to see it, but you never know what's going to happen. I'm interested to see what happens on the Pat McAfee show. I'm going to probably try to check that out for you guys. Um, and uh, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, unification match uh, at uh, this year's WrestleMania. Will it truly be a unified championship? Will we finally get rid of the blueberry belt and get a new belt? One WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt to reign supreme. And we will see what happens, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. You guys have been running up the likes, subscriptions, everything. And I, I thank you guys so much. We are that close to 70,000 subscribers. And this year, we will hit 100K. And I will be getting my uh, silver play button, silver plaque from YouTube with your guys' help. So appreciate all love and support. Roll to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.